Okay, welcome everybody back to BizLink. Uh, today we're going to be starting to talk about cabinets, cabinets that we use for our kitchens, our vanities, and various other areas in our homes. And no better person to talk to about that than Linda Boyett. Linda has been doing cabinets for quite a few years now. Hey, Linda, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. How are you, Dave? Doing great. Great. It's another beautiful day here in North Carolina. And why don't you tell me and tell everybody else a little bit about yourself. How did you get into cabinets in the first place? So um, my background is accounting and I went to work for a husband and wife. I'm back into and I was hired as their bookkeeper and I did a lot of bookkeeping duties, accounts receivable, accounts payable, stuff like that. And they were such a small company at the time. I asked if I could learn how to do other stuff. So I taught myself how to do the CAD drawings on 20. I went out with the owner and did some measurements and layouts on the actual floor of the homes. I started seeing how sales were working and I said, do you think you could let me sell? And he goes, I don't think you'd be able to sell anything. And I said, his wife goes, well, you should hear her collecting money on the accounts payable side. I mean, accounts receivable side. And so I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. And I said, we opened a really beautiful showroom. And I said, I'll come in on Saturdays. I will uh, work the showroom and it'll be on my time. And uh, we'll see if I sell anything. If I do, then we can talk about the commission that you'll pay me. So I started doing that in September from September to December, I ended up making more money in commission than I did the whole year working for them. I never went back to accounting after that. Kept continued to do sales. Wow, what a change. To me, it seems like a huge change going from accounting. It is a big to... difference. It's a big difference. I like it because I like people. I like to meet people. I like to help people. And the owner, he knew everything about cabinets. He ended up being my mentor. He, um, his his business kept getting bigger and bigger. He ended up opening four retail stores in Raleigh, and he opened one on Capitol, one in Durham, one in Cary, and one in Gardner. And I was doing so well in Raleigh that I was actually paying the bills for all four stores. And he decided, hey, I'm just not going to keep these afloat. You know, it's not doing what I thought it was. So he actually sold me my store in Raleigh on Capitol Boulevard for a dollar. So wow. I took over the store and was there a couple years. Um, and I was getting so many referrals that I decided to work from home. And so I've had my business, my own business since, two, and I closed the store down and I came to work from home and uh, I've been doing cabinets ever since. Uh, I go out, I can measure, I can lay it out, I can draw it on a CAD program with the 3D. And I started working, I started going into another company, try to open an account. They asked me to come to work for them as a salesperson. But I still had my business. I worked for someone else and I brought my daughter in and, and trained her. And now she's doing all the designs and I'm still doing the measurements and stuff so we just you know people will call us and say hey we want to remodel a kitchen we'll go out and do the measurement we'll do the order we'll do a 3d send it to them and i'll go from there wow that's great i mean it sounds quite the story going from accounting and then starting your own place there taking over one mm -hmm. and then jumping in uh, you said something about your daughter joined you also yes yeah, she had a baby and i was keeping the baby and it was hard for me to go out and do measurements and stuff like that i have a, another gentleman he works for a cabinet company as well well, full time, but he also works for me. I mean, he goes out and does measurements and he does some design. So we kind of have a collaboration. We've been working together for about eight years. So I told her, I said, you know, if I'm keeping the baby, it's going to be hard for me to go out and do stuff. So she was working at a really good company, and I said, why don't you quit that job? And it's been great. She's been with me two years now, and the, and the, and the little boy comes to work with her too. So it works out great. Oh, that's really nice to be able to do that. I mean, be able to spend time with family and still work at the same time. And that's interesting. Both of you jumped out of a career into something like this. Yeah, she was a manager. She worked for a company that they do the lottery tickets for the lottery. It's a, it's called Scientific Games. Okay. And she was like the manager of her department. And they were really like, please don't go, don't go. She really, <laughs> you know, she wanted to spend that family time with her son. And, right. and me too. I was enjoying keeping him. And so it's been a blessing to be able to do that with, you know, as a family. And I'm hoping, I have another daughter, and I'm hoping to leave my business to them and let them continue to do it because she loves it just as good as I do. Oh, wow. That's quite a legacy to leave right there for sure. So when we talk about cabinets, you've been around at it since 2000, so you got a good feel for them. Tell us a little bit about what a customer should be thinking about when they look at cabinets, because there's just so many kinds out there. Some are good, some are bad. So what I recommend is... Um, is definitely all wood cabinets, all, you know, soft clothes, all wood, full extension guide, dovetail drawers. And the dovetail is like tongue and groove. They go together like that. So when you're opening and shutting a drawer, it doesn't come apart. I've seen homes in, in Nightdale, five homes, and they have particle board cabinets in it. And the more you use a, a drawer that has your silverware in it, it'll pop off, pop off the front. And the dovetail won't because it's, it's glued together and it's tongue and groove. And so I recommend that. I recommend the reason I recommend 
the full extension drawer is because if you've got a junk drawer, say, and you're trying to get something to the back of the drawer, you pull the drawer out. If it's not a full extension drawer, then you can't get to the stuff to the back. So you have to take the whole drawer out to find what you're looking for. With full extension guides, they come. it comes all the way out to the end of the drawer so you can see everything in the drawer. Soft close. If you have soft close on your doors and drawers when you're closing them and they get to a certain point, it'll close itself. And those will actually give you an extra five to 10 years of life on, on your cabinets. The first thing oh, that really? goes on your cabinets is your door and drawers. Because you're opening and shutting them, your boxes, it's really hard to tear up a box on a cabinet. Okay. Um, if you have particle board cabinets, what I recommend is if you have those in your home now, what I recommend is if you're ever cleaning your stove or if you're like where your dishwasher is, you got to be really careful because it's a lot of moisture and those particle boards, that they take all that moisture that swell. So if you're cleaning your stove, I recommend you pulling your stove all the way out to clean it because then each cabinet on each side of that stove does not get damaged because you'll see a lot of times that the cabinet doors start getting warped on the side of the stove and, right. and actually beside the dishwasher too, which you can't do anything. You can't pull your dishwasher out. But when you pull the stove out, it keeps those doors from, you know, it keeps them intact for a lot longer. Oh, that's a good idea. I didn't even think about something like that. What, uh, is there materials as far as the coating on them? One better so, than another? So, yeah. So I don't recommend thermofoil, but a lot of companies have gone away from thermofoil. So what has happened is years ago, thermofoil was really popular. They're very inexpensive. They're particle board. It goes through a system and it's a piece of particle board and it goes through the system and a machine actually heats it up mm -hmm. and it wraps around the door and the box and everything. So those start peeling. They only last about seven, eight years. Well, now they've switched over to something called PET, which is another type of plastic and it's really nice. So if you see any kind of slab doors and they look like it's like plastic, like you can wipe them off and clean them, we're actually going to start carrying those for, at the company that I work for in the summer and they're going to be frameless. The nice thing about frameless cabinets is when you open the doors, if you have a 30 inch cabinet, you're going to get to be able to put 30 inches of stuff in there. If you have a framed cabinet, you're only going to have about 26 inches of room. Okay. So a frameless cabinet, you can get bigger stuff in and out of it. So that's, and, and they're a little bit more modern, like the, I guess I would say the younger generation, you know, how they want clean lines and real mm -hmm. simple stuff. The European frameless stuff <clears throat> really looks like that. So those are very nice looking. So if, but if you're, if customers are looking to do their kitchen and stuff, what I recommend, first of all, is calling someone, you know, like me or someone else who sells cabinets and say, I'm looking at remodeling my kitchen. Most every company who does it does free estimates. Have them come out to their house, bring some samples, talk the customer through what they're actually looking for. And if it's a good person, they're going to say, they're going to listen to what they're asking. And then they're going to make suggestions of, hey, you can change this or you can change that. And that's what I do. I go into the home and I say, I look at the layout, I pictures, I measure. And if they want to completely change the layout, I have general contractors who I can recommend that can go in with me and we do a collaboration together and they tear everything out and then we just kind of start from a clean slate. Or oh. I can go out with the footprint that customers have now and I can make it look a little different by using drawers instead of base cabinets. I can do I can do like pullouts, like spice pullouts or spice racks or trash can. So I can give you a little bit different feel in your footprint if you need that. Okay, that's a good idea because a lot of times we get stuck in this old kitchen and then we turn right around and do something similar to what we just did and we see something on the internet what have you and then we think gosh i wish you would have done something different so it's a good idea i like your idea of coming into the homes and actually looking at them and then try to give some suggestions of what's out there as far as trends go what are you seeing since you started to where you're at today white 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 is it really yeah so when i first started you would see white and it would last about three to five years and it would go out for three or four years and then it would come back Probably about, I would say, 10 or 12 years ago, white came back in, shaker came in. Like I said, again, clean lines, simple. A lot of customers are like, if you have a raised panel door or a lot of molding on your door, they're like, oh, I can't clean that. It's hard to clean. Depends on what kind of cabinet it is as far as the finish, if you can clean it or not. But everybody wants just really simple, you know, so a shaker is just a square door with a flat panel. And then you can get them in multi-colors. You can get them in all kinds of colors. So that is still trending every day. That's all people ask us for is, I want a shaker. They stain 
cabinets, the darker stain has pretty much gone away. The lighter stain there is coming back a little bit, but like for probably, I'd say a year and a half ago for 10 years back, nothing but painted cabinets. Nobody didn't want to do any stain. Stain's coming back a little bit now, but it's still shaker style, real simple, or the slab doors like I, you know, talked to you about. One of the things that I am seeing that is nice is the custom painting. A lot of times you have to go to a custom company or a domestic company and say, hey, I want this island in a, a blue. Like I have a beach house and I want my island a different color. We, at Where I get my cabinets from, I actually can have those custom painted for about 20 or 30% up charge. And I can get you any Sherwin Williams color or Benjamin Moore color that you want. You just give me the four digit number and I can have it painted that color. Oh, and, wow, the, and the lead time on it's about two weeks longer than the normal lead time. Okay, that's not bad at all, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we're making a big change and we're getting it tailored right into exactly what the customer wants. Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, do you do the painting uh, in the house or outside or so houses? We, so what we do is they pick out uh, what color they want. And then we take the basic white color that we offer in the shaker. And then we sand it down, we do a prep, and then we spray it in the spray booth. The company that I buy from actually paints them themselves. And the guy that does it, he uses the same exact paint that comes from the factory. So they're beautiful. They offer the same warranty on the painted cabinets and everything. So that, I mean, it's actually a trend that I'm seeing a whole lot right now is people want greens and blues. Black has actually become really popular. I just did a house at uh, Kitty Hawk, a huge house on the water, 72 cabinets and the whole kitchen's in black. Wow. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Now I worked with you about a year ago when we got my kitchen done and I did the black island and then we did the white on the walls and mm -hmm. it was a really nice contrast. It was a good choice that you mentioned about that. It turned out really nice for us for sure. I like that because the black and white, you can do different countertops and different tile and make it pop. I bet it's really pretty. It is. It's, it came out really, really nice. And so that was good that you suggested all that. Because I was never thinking that. I was always thinking everything has to be the same. Yeah. And you were giving me some good guidance as far as, hey, look, you don't have to do that. You can change things up. It's, it's, it's your world. You can do it any way you want to. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I do. And it was like, um, I didn't know that you can go to a variety of different colors, too. Now, that would spook some people because now there's too many choices. Um, you know, some of us just like one, two, three, or... Uh, just leave it alone kind of thing. But uh, that is really nice that you guys can do that to help people out with uh, making it exactly what they want. Yep. And it now, makes the house, you know, if you go into some of these new subdivisions and you go into the houses, you go in there and all you, you go into a house, same cabinets, same countertop, go into the next house. It's the same thing. You know, they call them cookie cutters. True. And I'm always been the type of person. I want my stuff to be different. I don't want it like look like next door. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, and being able to paint like that, a customer can have exactly what they want and be different than the house next door. That's a nice feature. It really, really is. Now, um, uh, there's a lot of building going on here all around Raleigh, all the communities around. I've been, I was out driving around the other day. I was probably over an hour away from here and I'm still seeing the expansion going out that way as well. What are you seeing as far as the big stuff, like a big apartment complexes, condos, things like that? Do you work with that? So I do with the other job, not my personal business, but okay. they're multifamily, which is apartments, townhomes, stuff like that. I've even done some assisted living homes where they've, they were already they were already built and they are actually as the residents move out um they they start remodeling them so and those come in you know you'll do 18 or 20 units at a time so i'm actually working on a project for the company that i work for beside my business on a 3 unit and a 30 townhouse unit so That's i'm working huge. on you have to bid for them and they want to they'll have a contractor who's already got the contract with the building and then so what happens is they'll ask you to bid and they take the lowest price they don't look at quality Quality. Mm. They don't look at workmanship. They don't look at anything. All they want to look at is that bottom line and, and how quick you can get them also. And that's one of the things about my business and the company I work for. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, you mm -hmm. can get the cabinets within two business days. Sometimes you can get them the same day. If you get them assembled and you pick, you know, we, you want us to deliver them, you can get them in seven days. So that's the nice thing. We're local and out of Nightdale. So anybody in the Triangle area could get cabinets within seven to ten days if they have a project they're in a hurry. And that usually happens 
happens around Thanksgiving and Christmas. I'll have somebody that's got to have their house ready for Thanksgiving. I had several last year and we made it all work for each one of them that we were working on. That's really cool to be able to do that because at that time of year, it's chaos for sure to be able to keep up with something like that. And I do like your location where your business that the other business is at where the cabinets are at mm -hmm. because it's right off the highway. It's super it sure easy is. to get Very to. convenient for a pickup. It was, it was. And it's nice that you come in uh, RTA, so they're ready to assemble, or they can be pre-assembled, which is really nice. Do you do delivery? Do they do delivery? We do delivery up to 200 miles. 200 miles, all mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and we also offer what's called a white glove, which is if the homeowner's not there or if a builder's not there and they have a lockbox, we'll charge a little bit extra to take them in the house and place them in the kitchen. Now that's big because and nobody of, does that anymore. No, they don't. I mean, I just recently had some stuff delivered to the house. They stop at the door and that's it. Now I have to figure out how to get it in and put it in location. Mm -hmm. So you guys actually take the next step and bring it in. Yes, sir. That's huge right there in itself. What other kind of things that are different that you do that uh, most people don't? So like like I said, the painting, the custom painting, a lot of customers, like a company that I used to work for where I actually learned all the stuff from the mom and pop company, they mm -hmm. ended up getting so big that they sold to a big a corporation now. So they're really huge. They do some custom painting, but they do five cabinets or less. We do custom painting, 20 cabinets, 50 cabinets, ever how many cabinets you want, we will paint them. They also charge a markup so if you if you pay five thousand dollars for a kitchen they charge you five thousand dollars to paint them if you pay five for a kitchen for us we charge 20 or 30 percent that's it wow. to paint them so i feel like we're different in that aspect one of the things about the cabinets that i sell i feel like it's also different is our finish um you know how you'll have young kids and they'll ride their little scooter and bang up against cabinets they don't chip they don't their wear and tear is just so nice we actually the factory that we buy them from actually used to make furniture and so they had all this furniture paint that was durable you know furniture lasts for years mm -hmm. so they saw that that was a good idea so when they started doing cabinets they started using furniture paint so it's more durable and i can take samples out to customers and i can show them my samples and they'll say oh my gosh this finish is unbelievable so that's one of the things that i feel like is, is different with the cabinets that i sell is the finish is the quality of the cabinets for the price our price is probably less than anybody else's in the triangle but i feel like our quality is better than most rta cab cabinets Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that sold me is that the uh, materials that you used was real wood versus mm -hmm. particle. Right. Yeah, I we mean, don't have any particle board. We don't have it in any of our cabinets. Yeah, I think at my very first home, it was a few years ago now, it was wood, but it didn't have the soft closes and all those kind of things. And it started getting loose. It started banging and it started making those funny squeaky noises and yeah, stuff. Yeah, when you close them, they slam. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. So the next house I built, I had those softer ones put in. That made a huge difference. But I noticed a humongous difference going from that to the ones I got from you. There's something about those slides slides what's what's different about them? i mean they're like primo so, so our slides you either love or hate okay. i have installers who hate them okay and i have installers who love them they're actually self-leveling so if the fact if a warehouse actually put the cabinets together put the drawer together wrong you probably would never know that as a consumer because when you close them you can kind of bang on the door on the drawer and it'll level itself it okay. levels itself up and down now it has adjustments underneath it has adjustments on the side but in the back they're self -leveling leveling so i personally like them because i actually can go out and adjust them for a homeowner if they have a problem they'll call me and say i cannot get this adjusted and then i can show them how to adjust it in the future because you know opening and shutting them you're they're going to get out of adjustment but they're so easy to readjust them so what has happened is um they're, they're just like the hinges. Our hinges are six-way adjustments. They have screws on them, and you adjust them, and you can adjust the drawer up and down. You can make sure that the door touches each other if it gets out of adjustment. A homeowner can do it. It's very easy, and that's why we made them like that. Same thing with the guides. We made them like that so that, that the homeowner, they can go back and adjust their drawers later on because, you know, I've gone in houses where I'm going to do a remodel, and the first thing you see is there are drawers like this. <laughs> yes. There's a door like this that won't close, and it's because no one's ever trained that homeowner how to adjust them and it's not that their cabinets are ruined and they think oh my cabinets just wore out well i probably could go in there and i don't want to because i would love to sell them in kitchen but i tell them you know there's adjustments on your hinges and sometimes i'll show them how to do it 
course, you know, I, they still want new cabinets. They've already got right. it in their head. So I'm thankful for that. But I'm not going to go in somebody's home and say, oh, that cabinet is ruined when it's not. And it's just an adjustment. But that's the problem with bigger companies. They don't take the time to, in, you know, educate the homeowner that you can adjust your drawers. You can adjust your drawers in 15 or 20 years. They mm -hmm. really should. Mm -hmm. And you spend a lot of money to do your kitchen and bathrooms. So you don't want to go in there in five years and say, oh, my door's hanging off the hinges. What happened? You know, if they educate the homeowner how to take care of them, and that's the other thing, too, is a customer will call me and say, send me a picture, and their door has lost the shine. Or, mm -hmm. and, and ours yeah. are not really shiny. Ours just has a satin finish. But it'll look like somebody's taken a scour pad and cleaned the cabinet. And yeah. I'll say to them, what did you use to clean the cabinet? And they tell me soft scrub or something like that. I said, you've taken off the clear coat. So, you know, we can take that door back. Since we have a state-of-the-art paint booth, we can take that door back for a few dollars and fix it for them. But I try to tell my personal customers when I go in there and, and lay it out and do all that and sell it to them. I tell them, the only thing that you clean your cabinets with is a, like, Dawn dishwashing liquid. Hot, oh, okay. soapy water, you clean them off, and then you take another wet rag and wipe it off and dry it with a paper towel. You'll never have any scratches or anything, and they clean up like brand new. It takes fingerprints off and everything. Didn't know that. Did not yep, know that. Yeah, that's the only thing you have to use, especially the black ones you have. Because the black ones you're going to see, the darker ones you're going to see a little bit of fingerprints and stuff when you open right. and close the drawers. If you just take like a sponge, as long as the sponge doesn't have like a scouring on it, okay. just take a sponge with some Dawn on it, clean it off, and then dry it off after you've cleaned this you know, the soap scum off right. and it's, it turns out just like brand new. Well, that's simple enough to do for sure. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, I mean, I probably, I I'll confess. I probably in the past have probably used the wrong products. And, and I, I think probably... a lot of people do. They're just like, Oh my, especially the ones around yeah. your stove and the grease gets on them. They're like, I can't get grease off. Dawn dishwashing liquid will get grease off of anything, including uh -huh. clothes. I mean, Dawn is amazing. Um, and it will not scratch your, your product. That's good. Yeah. I think the last house I built, I used, uh, it was like a oak color. Mm -hmm. That was what the color was at the time. And I think over time, I start wearing that finish off just exactly like you said. I didn't realize I was the one probably contributing to it by yeah. the products I was using to clean it. Now, the owner that bought the house, I think it was 22 years old when I sold it. And they took the last, the bottom half, kept them, and they had them repainted. And then they just replaced the top ones to a different style that they wanted. And it came out really beautiful. And it was, but it's really cool is that those things were solid. They're wood. And they kept going. So that was nice to see. And I like your idea about that because I've seen a house before where I've gone into and did a remodel. And it was particle board. And there's nothing you can do to save Can't those save poor them. things. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, and that's a great idea. A lot of customers say they've bought a new home and they have good cabinets. Mm -hmm but they want to change and do some colors and they have nice countertops. They have quartz or granite. So you don't want to, don't want to try to rip all that out. So what you said is a perfect idea. Take down your wall cabinets, do some floating shelves. Floating shelves are really, really popular right now. Some, if you go in some of these homes in the past, probably eight years, you'll see the microwave over the stove, every right. single house. Now hoods are very popular. Yep. They're putting microwaves in a base cabinet or setting it back on the counter or putting it in a pantry to hide it. And they're doing these beautiful hoods with floating shelves on each side so you could change your kitchen without changing your base cabinets and your countertop by doing exactly what you said get rid of all the wall cabinets and change and put in new wall cabinets and then uh or floating shelves and like you said you can either paint them or you can um you can do a different a different color because like mm -hmm. you said they're doing multicolored now so it just depends on what you want but it changes it looks like you've remodeled your whole kitchen and all you did was did something to the wall cabinets that's amazing and you can help folks out with that as well right yes sir okay absolutely awesome what are the kind of uh, things that you uh seen are trending forward what do you see going on forward from here anything big huge change um, one of the things i just said i'd say the hoods you know nobody wants to do the microwave over the stove anymore especially if they have where the stove is as a focal point when you walk in the kitchen they want to make that their focal point and put really nice tile up to the hood and i'm seeing more quartz now than granite mm -hmm. because quartz has a lot more patterns where if you get granite granite has all kinds of movement in it and it's natural you know it comes from the fact you know it comes from the um mine and it whatever's on that that slab is what you get right. what i'm seeing now is a lot of people again they want those clean simple things they want everything pattern wise look to look the same they don't want to see a pattern over here different from a pattern over here and that can happen with granite but with quartz you're going to have a more even pattern i'm seeing 
like I said, a lot of a lot of the grays and whites were going on, and now they've switched, and now it's a lot of whites with colors, uh, okay. black, blues, and greens. And I don't I don't see that changing for a little bit. And the white will stay in as a staple, but I think, like you said, they're going to either do like I see a lot of times where they'll do a blue on the bottom cabinets and a white on the top or black on the bottom. They're doing multicolors even within the exterior of the house, not just the islands. Mm -hmm. So that's what I see that's trending right now. And I don't think that's going to change for a couple of years. Okay. Now you sell vanities also, correct? Yes, we do. We okay. have a lot of different vanity styles. Uh, we One of the things that I feel like we're different than some other people is we have smaller vanities with drawers in them. A lot of times you can't get any drawers in a vanity until you get to like 36 or 42. We have some 30 inch ones that has two big drawers on the right side. And then there's like a false front in the front for mm -hmm. the sink to sit in. If you don't want that and you want a vessel sink, you can even get more drawers in there. So I think we have a little bit, that's where we're, I think we are different is we have some vanities with some different styles that other people have. That's a good idea. All right. What colors are they doing in the bathrooms you're seeing? I'm seeing a lot of the blue. Okay. Um, I sell a, a blue, it's called Midnight Blue. It's like a dark navy and the black. Um, it's very popular and um, of course white. I did do a project in Fayetteville and they were doing everything in the house white and all the bathrooms in a, in a gray. So they're still doing low gray, but I am seeing more colors in the bathroom. That's where I see a lot of the custom colors. I've, I've done a couple of pink bathrooms for little oh, girls. Really? Yeah, it kind of scares me because the little girl's going to grow up and then she's not going to want that. Somebody have to come in and paint them. Sure. But you know, that's job security for those painters because so, <laughs> they'll definitely want those changed from pink to under color when that child gets a teenager but but that's what they wanted and it turns out cute and they do all kind of decorative countertops and different colors and it brings everything together well that's kind of fun though when you got kids you know there's something you can do for them is make them individual yeah, you know because kids don't like to go in their bathroom they don't right. like to brush their teeth they don't like to take a bath and they, they just want to play and play <laughs> games eat supper they don't want to go to bed and do all that so you say hey your bathroom what color would you like it makes it more fun for that kid to be proud of that bathroom to oh, be absolutely. able to do that kind of stuff it is i never even thought of that now i used to see some homes from back in the day from the 70s uh, they were pink and a few other colors as and well especially the tile that little tile, the tile. Was pink and blue it was it was a lot of that and i think it just became kind of saturated i think what happened it was a trend for sure yeah. And it was great for the time, but it's nice to know that your company can actually do those kind of things. How far out do you go when we look at Raleigh? How far out are you going in that circle? I have customers in Kitty Hawk, so I'll go three, four hours. I don't go much further than that. If, if I have it, you know, I do have people who call me and say, hey, somebody referred me to you. Then what I do is I try to find somebody in that area that I know because I'm, mm -hmm. you know, with working with the other company, I know a lot of cabinet companies. So I'll say, hey, I can't do it, but this guy can. And I'll give you a reference for him. So, oh, that's nice. You know, I'll go up to three and a half miles or three and a half, four hours. But other than that, then I'll refer him to somebody that I know that I trust that I would let do my own house. That's great. That's that's a great thing to do because, you know, always referrals in this, you know, we talk to all these businesses here, um, looking out for each other and helping each other out and not overextending ourselves to the point where we're going to lose our quality or our service to our customers. Right. So and and I good. don't do that. If I have, that's one of the first things that if a customer tells me, oh, I want this done. I want it done right now. And I'll tell them, hey, you know, I have a set, I have a set, of, you know, I have a general, a couple of general contractors I work with. I have a couple of installers that are amazing. They do great work. And if they're scheduled, I have to schedule all that with everybody. So sure. if I'm trying to schedule your kitchen and, you know, it's not falling in your schedule, then I'll come to you and say, if it's not going to work, you know, I want to do everything. I don't want to rush through it, first of all. I, I want you to be my priority when I'm doing your kitchen. So I try to schedule them accordingly. And I try to get them, you know, I, I've never had anybody like say, I'm not going to do business with you because you can't schedule me because usually the business that I do get is from referrals it's from word of mouth um because I've been doing it so long I don't have to advertise my daughter and we have had this one little guy who helps her they go out and put flyers out sometimes in neighborhoods that I know that needs to be remodeled so we do that every once in a while but that's about all I do I have a you know I have a web page I have a Facebook that kind of thing so I you know, I have a little social media, but I don't do a lot. Of, I don't pay a lot for advertising because when I do someone's kitchen and they have a party or dinner, we'll come over for dinner. They're like, who did your cabinet?
minutes. They're mm-hmm. like, here's her card. You know, I always give people my cards and say, please give them out. And 90% of the time, I give a referral fee to that person. If they say, Miss Smith told me you did her kitchen, I'll send her a gift card and a thank you because I appreciate that because mm-hmm. I would I would do that for somebody else. That's great. That's great. There's one more area I don't think we talked about, and I'm seeing a trend. Three season, four season rooms, porches, things of that nature that are covered. Do you do cabinets for those kind of projects? I haven't ever got into, I have a, I have a source for outdoor kitchens, so to okay. speak. Um, and that's probably, if it's, um, if it's covered and it's not like climate control, then what happens is you can't put our cabinets out there. Okay. Um, All right. They're just, you know, they're wood. They're going to, you know, if they get, if the wind blows and they get wet, you know, they're, they're just not going to work. I have put some of my cabinets in a sunroom and it's not climate control, but it is enclosed. Okay. So, and they've held up just fine. But as far as outdoor cabinets, I have a source, but I've, I don't have a lot of experience in that. So what I do is I actually work with that source to refer people to them for the outdoor kitchens. And I work okay. and I can work with them as far as designing it okay. and have a design for them and show them what it's going to look like. And then I can kind of do a collaboration with that source and then he does the rest that's, that's great you do that and it's also i'm thinking like somebody's going to build a house they're at that point where they're going to go ahead and have a place where they can barbecue and things like that outdoors yeah and you're being honest about it and saying look my cabinets are not for that location but i can do your vanities i can do your kitchen mm-hmm. and here's my person i'm going to put in charge of taking care of that area for you right uh, that's that's really good so you got that covered. so it sounds like you got all the cabinets covered in the place oh what about a garage i didn't even think about a garage I actually just in my daughter's garage and it, I haven't done very many probably over the years I've probably done five or ten garages okay but the more I do it the more I like it and you can put ours in the garage okay because because our doors are made to expand and contract but they're not made to like pour water on them and get the water soaking on so that's why I said you can't use them for outdoor kitchens but they are beautiful in garages and it's it's definitely like we did hers with an actual sink in there okay and we did cabinets for storage so when you go in the garage we ended up we took the base cabinets and cut them we actually cut them down right. um, because you know you want them to be pat you know how you have garage doors and you have a little bit of the wall there right so the walls are not really 24 inches so you don't want to use a kitchen cabinet in there and we have capabilities of semi cuts kind of customizing stuff. We do a lot of modifications on our cabinets. We can make cabinets that are really not what we sell. And so anyways, so I cut them down and we put them over there so she can still, they can still put the cars in there, but there's no stuff everywhere. It's all hidden inside the cabinets. Oh, that's great to know that because what I'm noticing, because I come from Michigan and a majority of us had garages and we had cabinets, things like that in here. But here I noticed people were using for storage. Oh, However, no, they don't even put their cars. <laughs> no, they don't even put their cars in there. Now I do. And my ne- one of my next projects is put cabinets in there but i'm starting to notice some of my neighbors now they are starting to clean out their garages and reuse them for their cars and i'll bet you they're going to step into that hey yeah, like because storage. you know a lot of these new subdivisions don't have and you know that especially if it's a homeowner association they don't have those shit they don't like sometimes they won't let you put those sheds in the backyard because they're right. ugly or so to speak so they use their garage for storage like you said but if you put cabinets on both sides and you know you can put them as simple as you want or you know as fancy as you want you get all that stuff out of the way and what my son-in-law did is he ended up putting a butcher box a countertop on it so he could have it as a workbench so he has oh. all his tools in the cabinet he pulls them out he puts them like he did the electrical himself uh-huh. so he plugs them in he works on the bench and then he puts them away when he's done so you don't even know they're there he uses it as a workshop because he does a lot of stuff like that so you can make them you can make it into a workshop but nobody else would know that workshop is there because they're hidden mm-hmm. you can put all your you can take those little pegboards and put inside the all cabinets right. get rid of the shelves oh that's but a good that's idea hidden. it's not just hanging in sight so you hide it and it looks nobody knows that all that stuff's there they think wow you got some nice cabinets <laughs> in here but you open it up and that's where your tools are so it's really not you can make them as simple or as you know fancy as you want that's a great idea that's another tip for somebody right there i didn't think about doing something like that because we're all so used to seeing probably our grandparents and what have you had their tools hanging up. Grandpa mm-hmm. had the tools on those the pegboards, and they're so yes. ugly. Yes, it did. You know, it was nobody, always a mess. Nobody really cares if they're hanging out, but no. you know, this day and time, you can go and you know, like I said, these really nice upscale neighborhoods, and they're like, "What do I do for storage?" And my husband loves to do, you know, piddle around or whatever, and he has all these tools, and they're so ugly. And <laughs> but if you put the cabinets in there, take the shelves out, just right. mount a piece of pegboard on there, and you can hang all kinds of stuff in there. That's a great idea. I love that tip well listen to what tell me the name of your company how people can get a hold of you what's the best way it's really easy to remember it's called the cabinet store 
Well, that's simple. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, it's my phone number. I answer it all the time, no matter what time of day it is. That's the other thing is if I've done a job for somebody and they have an issue, if they call me, I'm going to pick up and talk to them. I live at home by myself. My kids are grown. Um, so that, you know, I enjoy doing this. And like I said, I like to go into a house and see an ugly kitchen, so to speak, and then take pictures of it when it's done. And then the homeowner thinks that they've remodeled their whole house because you spend a lot of time in your kitchen. You, you entertain in your kitchen. You cook for your family in your kitchen. So you want your kitchen to be your dream kitchen. And that's kind of my motto. My, my um, little uh, shirts that me and my daughter wear, well, it says the cabinet store, making your dream kitchen come true. Well, that's a good idea it, because it is true. Most of us spend most of our time when we have friends over right there in the kitchen. And I was amazed when I updated mine, the massive difference it made in the area. It made it brighter, it made it more cheerful. It just made it more comfortable to be in mm -hmm. there for sure. Just by making Maybe some you changes. Maybe invite people over. Yeah, exactly. Because it, when they were like the old ones, just like, oh, no, I don't want nobody to see this. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't even put some of those in my garage. I mean, they were so bad. Oh, that's funny. They're old. They were old. So it was an old house I, I'm working on. So this is a great project. And I'm glad I met you and uh, able to spend some time with you. Absolutely. And if, if you need anything or anybody that's listening needs anything, call me. Um, even if you just need advice, I like helping people. I, you know, I'm not out there for the money. And that's the other thing that me and my, my daughter always says, you know, hey, we've been working together two years. You haven't gone up on your prices. You do the same markup every time. I'm not doing it to get rich. I do it because it is making a living. I'm able to work with my family and be home and work from home. And the thing I do it for is because, like I said, a customer will call me and they're just at wit's end. They don't know what to do. And I help them get their dream kitchen. And then I just feel it makes me feel good and like i said i've never had anybody not do a job with me because of pricing right yeah you have great pricing and the product i was surprised that the product was way over top of what i thought it was you know for the price i'm glad so, you liked it i do i really really do so i'll be doing some more projects and we'll be talking more about Sounds those good. and i appreciate you coming on and sharing with us and uh, giving some tips and advice on what we can do differently Sounds good. I hope you have a great day. I do. I do. All right, everybody. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. And I hope you got some advice here. I hope you got some tips to make some differences in your kitchen, bathroom projects, or maybe your garage or your porch. Linda's the person to get a hold of, and uh, she will make a difference for you for sure. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Bye.